All right. Well, Dana Gould's coming in. We're doing Heels Jewels. So Good. I'm officially excited about this because uh, I hope everyone listening knows Huel. Huel passed uh, a couple years back, not too long ago. Fixture out here in SoCal, California in general. Uh, California California's, gold. California's, California's gold. California's gold. Uh, met him in person <laughs> once on the campus of L.A. Valley College. Probably circa 1984, talking about AIDS. Excuse me? And yeah. what were you doing at a college? Well, you know, I went, my college career goes as, as follows. I was recruited to play football at a couple of smaller, medium-sized, whatever colleges, mm-hmm. good colleges, and UC Davis and Cal Poly Pomona and Marshall and I don't know, um, God, I'll think of a few of them, but uh, it's a couple of decent uh, Pacific UOP. Uh, mm-hmm. Some places that you know could have had a good uh, agricultural department or engineering department. Sure. I was in no shape for right. anybody's department, so I I, I was just like uh, the coach who was a thin coach. You don't see a lot of rangy coaches. This guy, the head coach at LA Valley College, was about six five. Probably about 180, sinewy and incredibly fit, but mm. still scary and aggressive. And um, he was the coach, and I, I remember him hanging out, kind of scouting like the last game I played in high school. And then when it became clear I wasn't going from high school to college academically, he did the, uh, why don't you come on over and play for us for a couple seasons or something, and then no. you, you could just transfer. It really was like junior college for me, my mom, maybe my dad, many Americans is a kind of placeholder so you can tell people you're doing something. You know what I mean? Right. It's all that it it never it rarely happens. But, you know, when people start uh, sniffing around and they go, oh, what are you doing after high school? You can't go cleaning carpets, bitch, or digging ditches for seven bucks an hour. You got to go. Well, uh, I'm going to go to junior college. I'm going to uh, take, a, take out a couple of units there. Then I'm just going to go ahead and transfer those to yes. Harvard or Princeton. Get all you my know? standard courses just, out of the way. Just, yeah. And no one ever really does the math. Like, you were a piss poor student in high school. Now you're going to go <laughs> to, the to high school with ashtrays. Right. And now you're going to get, all of a sudden you become a genius, and then you're just going to transfer <laughs> to UC Berkeley That's or what something. That's typically kicks in as yeah, yeah, a year after high school. <laughs> Yeah, because at 19 and a half, <laughs> that's when the that's scholastics, the it's all the training. <laughs> the motivation gland starts firing. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, we know who you are by the time right. you get out of high school. And uh, it's almost as absurd, but we don't look at it this way. It's almost like saying, I was cut from the JV soccer team mm. when I was in high school, but then I'm going to go to junior college, I'm going to be a star sure. on right. the team, and then I transfer to Cal. Right. It's like, well, maybe you don't have those skills. People always cite the outliers, like the crazy like example, like, well, Dennis Rodman, you know, grew eight inches in, in junior right, college. Like, right. yes, you, you know about that because it's so insanely <laughs> rare. That's the only person it ever happened to. Oh, you mean the one guy the one time? Yeah. Right. It wasn't. It was it was not going to happen with me, but I, I had to tell people I had a plan because sure. everyone wants to know what you're doing after after high school. And we know how fond your mom is of junior college. Isn't oh she my, still in it? She <laughs> still in role? She uh, she's auditing. She, class. She's the only tenured student. <laughs> Now, you've heard about tenured professors. Oh, sure. She that's, was a tenured student at L.A. Something. Valley College. Wow. She must she must have she put could in say whatever she wanted. Not get fired. <laughs> she must have had like twenty three years in at wow. uh, L.A. But but again, it was all just leave me alone. Right. Oh, yeah. And then when you get older, it's kind of a point of pride. Like forty seven year old woman, she's going to the mm. local JC. Yeah. She's saying, "Oh, look at you." Yeah. But she must have taken every class there. Uh, no, just Chicano twice. studies. <laughs> yeah, Chicano studies, and then uh, she transferred to the uh, very prestigious CSUN, which is you know four miles up the road, sure. and then got her degree at some point, and then went home, waited to die. <laughs> I've, look, I've said it a million times. They should only really th- there should be some more scrutineering going on before you get to that junior college. Like if you want to enroll in the nursing program, so be it. If you're just here to find yourself, go mm-hmm. fucking find a job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
and then come back here and take, find yourself. Take the gap year. So you, Huel, and AIDS. <clears throat> so uh, I was wandering around, and I was probably asking if they had a radio station or something, and taking psychology classes and voice and diction, some radio thing. I was uh, I was on the football team, but the football team was not what I was expecting. Um, I didn't know that it, the football team would be comprised of, first off, almost all the guys who were on my all-league team mm. from the Valley because they're notoriously dumb, mm. and they all have to go to junior mm. college for a year or two. But these guys were legitimate guys who could go there for a year and then transfer to UCLA. I, I wasn't really that guy. I didn't have the tools for that. So my first awakening was there were 80, 90 guys on the team they all seemed to be really good, like mm. big and strong mm -hmm. and fast. And I was like, oh, I thought this was junior college. Right. Well, turns out the SoCal Junior College. Like a Sandlot team. <laughs> it just, it turns out that the, the schools that were recruiting me, mm. like Willamette and, um, you know, Cal Poly San Luis or something, mm. uh, the junior college team at Santa Monica, Pasadena, Pierce, or Valley College could probably beat those teams. They talent. had a lot yeah. more talent and uh, more skilled position guys, if you know what I'm saying, uh, Gina. I'm not sure. The guys that came in from other neighborhoods that had a better 40 time. Oh, like Bel Air? Some of the, oh, Sorry, Brentwood. Uh, Farther kind of, east? Kind of guys that might drop the ball before they cross the goal line. Uh -huh. Just uh, those guys. So uh, there's a lot of that. So uh, I was just there, and I was getting beat up and yelled at, and it was hot, and it was so damn hot. That's all That's all I remember, and I was like, Ugh, I can't escape this damn heat. But my alternatives were quitting the team mm -hmm. and then having nothing, right. no identity, no nothing that good. And then I knew that you know if I quit the team, it was, it was back to carpet cleaning at that point. But it was... Um, it was so abysmal, and it was it was clear that I wasn't going to start. And football is so ill that if all you do is practice and you don't get to play the game, uh, that is like endlessly moving furniture and never going into the house and sitting Ew. down on the couch you moved. Right. It's like that's all you do. It's like ugh. Uh, at some point, I switched from linebacker to defensive end, but there were a couple second-year guys that were ahead of me, and it, it just it wasn't in the cards, and at uh, some point, I had to quit. And uh, quitting was tough because, uh, for me, that was just quitting football. And uh, the only thing I'd been Quitting your identity. At, yes, that's all I had for the last decade was, oh, I was good at football, but uh, no more. And the coach, uh, we had a short, stocky defensive coordinator guy who used to like to reach for chewing tobacco if you're starting to anger him. So he kept a lot of dip in his mm -hmm, mouth. Mm -hmm. And uh, you ever kind of gave him, you know, like he was the kind of guy to go like, you're in charge of containment on the kickoff. And then you'd go, I wasn't in charge of containment. Oh. Uh, Johnson was in charge of it. I, and he, you'd see his hands start like reaching up, you Don't know, like him. whip the dip, whip the dip, like he pulled dip out and just throw it at you. Well, you go take a lap and he take it and just throw it at the back of your helmet, you know, quit the team faggot. They yeah, had the stuff we could get. They could get away with back then. Yeah. The, the rules have changed dramatically, but I will tell you, you'll like this about Andy um, since the kids in uh, basketball camp, it takes it very seriously. I think I wasn't there, but I think there was maybe a little bit of back talk to mm -hmm. the coach, maybe a little six year old uh -oh. sassing, like light sassing. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what happened, but when we got home, there, a dour look on that child's face. And Andy goes, tell him, tell him what, what we talked about in the car. And he looks at me and goes, the coach is God. Wow. That's what Andy told him. When you're playing, the coach is God. Yeah, well, that's how you have to think when you're young. You get older, you realize there's something wrong with most of these guys, <laughs> especially football coaches. Absolutely. But um, I quit, and, uh, you know, it was a lot of the guy was yelling, you know, you'll be sorry, mm. you could have started next year, blah, blah, blah. Next year seemed like a long ways away because we'd barely started this season. 
and I wasn't going to play, and the other guys were going to move on, but I just uh, That's also screw it. kind of a hallmark of a junior college student a lot of times, is that mm-hmm. a lack of foresight. It's like, mm. yeah, it's really hot right now. Won't be in a month and a half, but yeah. no, that's too far away. Or the next season, I could be for a starting spot. That's yeah. a year away. I'm not going <laughs> to I know. That. Well, it's, you know, at, at uh, 5% of my life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So exactly. I, went, uh, I went inside, took a couple classes, ran into Huell. <laughs> I just remember him coming up to me with a microphone, asking me about AIDS. Oh my God, we gotta find this! I was gonna say this has to exist. I. Why is I, this the first we're hearing of this? Cut anything? And I've never seen it anywhere. But you're right. He the only thing that hits the edit bay floor is the <laughs> shoes of the editor. That's what I like to say oh. about heel. But uh, he asked you about a a man who is so obsessed with like broken glass and rock quarries. Yeah. Really wanted to tackle AIDS. Well, I guess AIDS was going on. Yeah. You know, it was a thing. Let's see what the young people, people think. Right. <laughs> and he headed down to, I'm sure, you know. It's probably top of mind for LA, you. Junior, LA Valley College had to be the closest yeah. place to wherever he was because that's how he rolled. Or that's how he didn't roll. He didn't roll very far. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't like to roll. Right. And I have a vague recollection of that. I'm sure wow. I had a nonsensical answer. You forget, <laughs> b- before you talk for a living... Mm-hmm. People put a microphone in your oh, face. Yeah, you can't make. Right. You cannot you make blind. sense yeah. of what's coming out of your mouth. You know, we make fun of all those people. Like, uh, this is a neighbor of the house that exploded. Did you ever smell any gas or anything? They put the mic in front of the person's face. Like, I like cottage cheese. <laughs> you know, it's like you, your mouth Back to you in the studio. You, you can't function. Yeah. We, we, do we, I don't know if you, Gina, have a story about being interviewed like for the news or whatever mm. before you had any business being on a microphone. Not as though I do. But when I was a freshman in college, CNN, well, supposedly CNN came to the you know college campus to do a fucking stupid segment on the Kevin Bacon game. Oh. That was a big deal in 1996, mm-hmm. right? And so they're like, oh, here, we're going to play it with a few students. And I happened to be like good at it, but I didn't mm-hmm. know what the fuck I was doing. I was petrified. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, so here's a CNN news guy sitting down with right. me, putting his microphone in my face. That so, might exist. Who knows? When they asked you about AIDS, you said, it's a fine diet candy. Yeah. But it's not- yeah. <laughs> I recommend it highly. Yeah, I was. I had nothing. But I, I do. I remember there was another time I was at the Sherman Oaks Galleria back when it was outdoors. And there was another crew and like somebody else did the mic. And I, I remember just gibberish, you know, like I made no points. Nothing came out of my mouth. And I I, re- I I just realized well, not so judgmental of Biden now. Are yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's had some That's he's had some true. reps. That's you true. Know? We, we I, still be seasoned at this I, point. I didn't know what to do, and but but I and I also remember trying to do man on the streets. Oh. Like I was the one holding the mic I in the very that. early days of Kevin and Bean going down to the streets of New York City and talking to folk. Surprisingly hard. Could barely the get worst. the mic figured out. You know, you talk. Yep. Now I'm going to talk. Nobody wants to talk you, to you. <laughs> especially New York. Yes. It was, yeah, it was weird. It, it's it's interesting because it's in things that happen to you that are, you know, tangible or visual, like hair loss or hair growth or weight <laughs> loss or weight gain. You can wrap your mind around that stuff. But just getting better at stuff that's invisible, mm-hmm. it's hard. You never quantify it. It's hard to think about. You're just all of a sudden you're good at it or right. OK with it or happy with, with it, it or comfortable or whatever. And you're having a conversation. But at the beginning, no, oh. sir, Bob Dixie. Mm. All right. Um, Brian has a movie that. I haven't seen, but... But uh, have you heard of it? I saw the I've trailer. Heard of, I've heard of it. I'm surprised how many people are only vaguely yeah. familiar with this huge Hollywood movie starring some of the biggest stars in the world. Yeah. Uh, well, Sonny went and saw it, and it was funny. He, he, like, came back, and I went, was it good? And he went, yeah, it was good. It was, like, it was pretty good, but um, they, they talked about rape a, a lot. <laughs> what was the central like, theme of the film? And I was like... Oh. But so the woman was right. Well, they just, she's like, they just kept talking. They just kept going, you know? And I was like, oh, that's nice. You're 15. I was like, (laughs) yeah, I mean, I liked it, but they just kept talking about rape. And I was like, okay, well, maybe I am in on this one. (laughs) I like rape. So uh, we'll do a Bollywood on that. Tell you if a movie's good 
Brian will review the flicks that he's seen up on the big screen or in his Netflix queue. Before you spend bucks, remember his taste sucks. He loved that train wreck piece of shit. Transformers 2. Hooray for Bollywood. The Last Duel is in theaters now. Oh, you know what? Shame on me. I forgot to look up if this was streaming on HBO, which I think it is. I think it, it is. is. I'm pretty sure it is. But you guys can double check that. You see it in theaters, though, if you do see it. It's a, quite a spectacle. Uh, directed by Ridley Scott, a uh, legendary director of uh, some of my personal favorite movies, uh, Black Hawk Down, Alien. Of course, he's a legendary director of uh, Blade Runner, uh, mm. The Martian, uh, wow. Gladiator, of course. Adam That's a he, resume, man. It, he's, he's put together. An, now, he's had a few misses, right? So he's had some movies that just frankly weren't that good. Like, but when, when he... What were some? Well, he did Thelma and Louise, mis- which is good. He did uh, the um, the counselor, which no one saw, Never which heard was of it. bad. He, he the ones that are bad. Black Rain, mm-hmm. no. I think. Oh, was Michael it the Lisa Bonet? Wait, wait. Oh, no. Black, Black Rain no, no. is was Michael Black? Douglas. It was, but now I'm confusing him and Tony Scott. God damn well, it. While you do that, it is not streaming. I was thinking of Dune. Okay, it's only in theaters. Adam, I know who you are with dusty movies. Question mm-hmm. number one: Do you like Gladiator? Yes, very dusty. I, I do. Yes, very but. dusty, but such a good action movie. This you movie know? is not dusty. It's very dirty. This movie mm-hmm. takes place in 1380s France, mm-hmm. medieval uh, in the Middle Ages. Is it muddy? It is muddy. It is mud and uh, unsanitary conditions throughout. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't know how you feel about that. I don't know if you have a take on it. Uh, muddy, not as bad as dusty. Okay. Well, you'll be all right. So this stars Matt Damon, Adam Driver, uh, Jodie Comer, who is not only excellent, she's the star of the film. Obviously, when you're dealing with huge stars like Matt Damon and Adam Driver and Ben Affleck's in this too, you get a little bit of lower billing if you're not a huge name. But mm-hmm. let's let's be fair. She's the star of the movie. Uh, 85, oh, I should point, uh, point out that uh, Matt Damon uh, uh, and uh, Ben Affleck co-wrote this mm-hmm. along with the writer of um, uh, Can You Ever Forgive Me, which was nominated mm-hmm. for an oh. Oscar uh, Melissa Center. McCarthy? Ha- uh, she didn't write it. Ha- no, but that's who yeah. she's yes, in yes, it. Yes, mm-hmm. correct. Uh, 85% uh, amongst the critics, 81 amongst the people. That's a good sign. So everyone is sort of on board with this being a good movie. And in fact, to Sonny's uh, evaluation, this is a very good movie. In fact, I went into this with low expectations. I didn't like the trailer. I like, you know how, you know how those movies are like, I know what this is. I know mm-hmm. what this is going to be. Mm-hmm. I don't want to see it, but I kind of feel like I have to or everyone's talking or whatever the reason. And I went into it and I was so pleased. Pleasantly surprised. So number one, this is a uh, Rashomon style storytelling. The story is told from three different perspectives and three mm-hmm. different segments. You get mm-hmm. uh, Jodie Comer's version of the story, uh, uh, Matt Damon's version of the story, and uh, Adam Driver's version so of the story. So rape threefold. So th- there is a, I, I'll back up Sonny. There's a lot of rape in this movie. For, it's the same rape, but it's, uh, it's shown in graphic detail several times. So you got to be okay with that. I, I had a dream that I fought Adam Driver. You're not going to do well that one. Who he's won? A, he's a strapping fellow. He's a I marine, know. I think. I know. I, I don't know why. There's something about him. Why did you Because I decided he shouldn't be a big star in oh, my head. Oh, it was principled. <laughs> yeah, and I took a stand. I don't know. There's There are guys. Like, it's, again, you, you see Ben Affleck or George Clooney mm. or whatever. You go, ah, that guy's a star. Uh, that guy's mm. a star. I decided Adam Driver shouldn't be working as much as he's working. Wow. I, de- I just decided this yeah. guy's not a star. And somehow... <laughs> It's b- bothered me ever since. Well, to piggyback on that, I have a problem seeing Ben Affleck in period pieces. It always bumps me oh, like Shakespeare in Love and stuff. Okay. Does it bother you seeing him in a period piece? I loved Ben Affleck in this movie. He plays a similar character to Shakespeare in Love in oh, the sense that he's sort of a pompous ass. Right. You know what I mean? He's very, uh, he's very rich and pretty. He's, he's a... <laughs> What is he? Not a lord, but whatever he is, he's like the lord of the fiefdom, right? So mm-hmm. everyone kind of works for him who lives in his area, and so th- thus he's just rich and fucks all okay. day. He's, 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 uh, he's, he's a pompous ass, and it's fun. Uh, so here's the story of the movie. 1380s, uh, thir- yeah, late 1300s France. Um, Matt Damon is a... Uh, He's a squire who eventually makes a knight. Knight is obviously, you know, the top level for a, for a guy mm-hmm. uh, who does like him. He's a, he's a mercenary. Whenever there's a battle, the king's messengers come for him and say, hey, we're fighting the Visigoths that come, you mm-hmm. know, fight for us. And he's a fierce warrior. We see him in battle. It's very bloody along the lines of, you know, gladiator or whatever. And uh, then he returns home, uh, eventually uh, marries uh, Jody Comer. He's very beautiful. Very Killing young. Eve. 
Uh, she was just in. She might. That might be true. I think she's I the star of Killing Eve. She was just in Free Guy. She was the female oh, okay. lead in Free Guy. She's very good in that and very good in this. He comes home to her and marries her, uh, and then he must leave from time to time to collect his bounty. He's a mercenary mm-hmm. essentially, mm-hmm. and uh, you're like, I got to go to France for a week. Uh, it's going to take me a week to get there and back. I'll uh, come back with our money. Uh, you stay here, and uh, through some circumstance, you find yourself alone in their mm-hmm. giant, you know, manor castle, essentially small castle, and. Uh, um, uh, here comes Adam Driver, who's a squire also, but didn't make knight, right? Like there's like a rivalry between mm-hmm. these two guys because Ben Affleck favors him, right? It's mm-hmm. a kind of a very nuanced story. Mm-hmm. Like Matt Damon is a knight and a, a fierce warrior, but he's he's not liked by anybody. He's very unpopular. Like people put up with him because he's so great with a fucking broadsword, but they don't like him. Meanwhile, Adam Driver is very very easy with the ladies. He charms, you know, he charms. Casting against type. Adam Driver? You Matt Damon him? and Adam Driver? Oh, he's the yeah. not likable one? Well, if you can find a picture, Kalen, put up Matt Damon. He's got a weird scar in his face, okay. and he's, he's just rough around the edges. Uh, and then there is an uh, incident uh, that is shown a number of times where Adam Driver uh, brutally rapes his wife, Judy Comer, in their house. She's all alone. She can't defend herself. He's obviously a very big guy. And then it becomes a her word against his kind of thing, although it's not even her word against his because he freely admits to it. Back in 1380s France, you could do that. Like, mm-hmm. you know, the woman was get, she was sending me advances, you know what I mean? Mm. She clearly she wanted it. She clear this is how the rules were explained in the movie. She clearly derived pleasure from this, and though thus, you know, I can't be guilty of, of assaulting her. Mm. Oh well, so how we how's it determined whether someone derived pleasure? And it's Adam Jarvis' word. Oh, he's, okay. he's a squire. <laughs> He's well, a, Matt, Damon, Matt Damon in 1356 looks like Theo Vaughn from Tuesday. <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> well done. I don't know. There's a lot of difference between those two dudes. <laughs> so a lot of vagaries in French law in the late 1300s. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It turns out that uh, the women don't generally come forward and charge squires with, you know, what? raping them. But this this one does. She's like, fuck that. This happened. I'm standing up for myself. And uh, it comes out that, okay, you've made this accusation. Uh, we, we, your husbands and Adam Driver will now engage in a public duel, hence the mm-hmm. title of the movie. And uh, God will not let the righteous lose. So whoever wins must then have been, you know, God must have uh, chosen them him. to win because they were telling the truth. Right. right. Which you can see would be problematic. The strongest guy in the village can just get away with anything because he just right. kicks ass. Right. And so, he's got God on his side. Exactly. Yeah, well, that reverse engineering. You know, the, right. He who won must have right. had God on his side. Right. Here is uh, Julie uh, Comer, uh, uh, Kalen, if you got that clip, uh, uh, confronting Matt Damon after she realized, because she doesn't know the law. She's, you know, like a, essentially a commoner. And she's like, what, what, have, what have you done? Now, now there are horrible consequences to this. Before the duel. Yeah, after he makes the public accusation right. and challenges uh, Adam Driver to the duel. You knew what would happen to me should you lose this duel. You knew and you didn't tell me. God will not punish those who tell the truth. My fate and our child's fate will be written not by God's will, but by which old man will tire first. How dare you speak to me this way? What if I to lose? I begged you to find another way and now I might be burned alive. I am risking my life for you. Mm. You are risking my life so you can fight your enemy and save your bride. And that could render our child an orphan. Or did you not think of that? Wow. So, yes. Pretty the, sassy for back in the day. The stakes, as you can imagine, no pun intended, are pretty high. Uh, now, I'm gonna, Adam, I'm going to ask you this. I need your help with this because I thought mm-hmm. I had pretty good... I thought I had a pretty good grasp on um, woke, what woke was. Uh, a lot of uh, conservatives are branding this movie as woke because a woman dares to, uh, uh, cl- uh, you know, uh, uh, purport that she was raped. Mm. Uh, Caleb, you got that uh, headline. Go ahead and put it up there. Breitbart's, uh, it's a woke <laughs> movie. It's a woke movie because she dares to. Uh, I'm just to like Matt Damon. Yeah. Uh, she dares to proclaim her, 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 her plight. What is woke? What is woke? <laughs> you know mm. when you see it. Yeah, I think woke would be, my definition, I guess, would be whatever was going on with the zeitgeist, you joining in with that. So if if you'd never heard of critical race theory until 10 minutes ago, and now you're all down with it, and then people were complaining about Dave Chappelle, and you're kind of down with that, it's kind of 
d- jumping in on whatever is 10 minutes old. So you, in- a lot of su- like you never thought about the trans community mm-hmm. and now you're all in on the right. trans community or maybe there's, um, you know, maybe somebody says, uh, you know, the president says Jim Crow 2.0. And you're like, that's right. That's what's going on without uh, really like stepping back and going, what's going on? So Examining. On the other side of that coin, by that definition, the SS were woke. The SS were woke. You know, Hitler whipped everyone into a friend. They said, let's get in on this. Get rid of some Jews. I've never really thought of them as woke, but <laughs> maybe they were woke by by the, the standards of, so of the, the day. They were the National Socialist Party. That's the, what Nazi was, right? Am I wrong about no, that? No, I'm, I'm just a, fucking Well, with the you. word, I mean, the word woke only existed for the last eight years or. Yeah, I mean. Seven years, yeah. or 12 years Decade. or whatever. It feels like a long time. So I can only go by today's definition of woke because I don't know what the I don't know what it would have been years ago but when I think of woke I just hear people I think of people that are kind of bandwagoning and jumping in on on subjects or things that by the way on things that they never really thought about or considered or had thoughts mm-hmm. about and then pow like just just jumping in, you and, know, and and there's an air of um, being disingenuous, probably to that if you have never thought of it before. Well, like you know, Sarah Silverman is woke, but Sarah Silverman made jokes about blacks and Chicanos and gays, you know, her entire career, and then, bow, now she's woke. Sure, you know, now she's sorry. She wants to take it back. It literally means I woke up, like I, yeah. I did all this I'm, stuff, I'm and now, right. now I can see what's what's going on. I don't get the Breitbart woke. Part of part of this. I've heard this but. from a lot of people, not pertaining pertaining to the movie, which is I was actually talking to a guy the day I saw this. I'm like, guys, oh, the last duel is really good. He's like, really? Do I really want to see a woke uh, medieval movie? I'm like, that's not what it is. I don't know where you're getting that from, but apparently that's a thing. I thought woke was like you're you're woke to racial issues or discrimination or whatever the issue is. You're woke to that issue, like you said, aw- awakened. Uh, but now it just means anything that someone doesn't like well and isn't it ironic if uh, whatever newspaper whoever writes like because there was the the phrase toxic masculinity in Mm. that headline which is like isn't it ironic if someone's being like oh they call this toxic masculine (laughs) like isn't that a little emasculine to bitch about that yeah, I guess. No, I mean, I would say aggressive rape is toxic masculinity. Well, I'd say it's the pig example. Fighting each other over <laughs> rape. I mean, there's. I guess there's. I guess what it is is, it. You know, I grew up, you know, playing cowboys and Indians and watching John Wayne movies, and I thought, you know, indigenous people were. American Indians were savages. Sure. You know, that's that's how we grew up. Cowboys and Indians. And then at some point you get a little older and you find out some more nuances mm-hmm. about it and you go, Oh, well now I don't feel that way. So that's kind of an awakening. But then then I guess what happens is so everybody has or most everyone has that sort of realization. It wasn't all just right. savages attacking mm-hmm. trains and stuff. And then it starts getting into a different. Then it starts drifting into a different strata, which is um, how noble the American Indians are, and how we need to replace mm-hmm. Columbus Day with uh, Indigenous Peoples Day. And then we start. We got to take down the. Lewis and Clark with sat- second Sacagawea, Sacagawea and all that kinds of. Now we're getting into the woke. So right. the the understanding, coaching up, learning, mm. nuanced part. That's kind of the middle part for me. The woke is when it keeps right. going. Oh. And you know how the other day we were talking about the different I and mean, the, the 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 comparison between like you know um, Tipper Gore and like you know the the Christian coalition wanting to silence people, and now it's the other side. You just made me think of this when you were talking about like being woke, being woken up, being woke and being born again mm-hmm. have a lot of similarities. Yeah, yeah. yeah it is. Waking it's up like and being born again. Well put. You've been yeah, baptized right. in some new new form of religion. Yeah, so woke is you want to take down the Civil War general that, uh, you know, killed all the, you know, killed all the folks from the north or something. I go, yeah, you take that one down. But as it starts getting into the boulder that's racist, now uh-huh. we're getting, now we're drifting into woke. Okay, that's so this this is it. not that, as you can probably tell. And as you can probably tell, I like this movie a lot. This is a very good movie. This will certainly be up for a couple of Oscars. I wow. can see this being up for Best Adapted Screenplay. It's a very nuanced. It was a book? 
I'm almost positive. It's well, it, it, the whole the whole title is "The Last Duel: A True Story of the Trial by Combat in Medieval France." Sounds like a yeah, book. I knew, I knew about the true story part. I didn't know if it was adapted from a book specifically mm-hmm. uh, or an article or something. But either way, uh, really well done. This is this is up there with Gladiator, like in terms mm. of like very good Ridley Scott movies. I will say this: I'll warn everyone. I'll, first of all, I'll say. Good movie. Check it out. You'll like it. Not as crowd pleasing as Gladiator Gr- mm-hmm. was like, you know, sw- like mm-hmm. almost swashbuckling and mm-hmm. an underdog story. Mm-hmm. Whereas this one, you don't like Matt Damon and you don't like Adam Driver in this one. You're kind of confused of who to root Who's for. The hero? And at the end, you're like, I, I true when the when the titular last duel came around, no idea which way it was gonna go. No oh, wow. idea who's gonna take who's gonna win. It is a book from 2004. There All you right, go. I'm into it now. Yeah, man, check it out. The last duel. Hooray for Bollywood! <laughs> We're looking at uh, Matt Damon and Theo Vaughn. I think I think we got a match. <laughs> Although the audience does have it at eighty-one percent, so maybe it is crowd pleasing. Maybe yeah. I'm off base. Yeah, people seem to like it. Well, I like I said, Sonny liked it, except for the. Uh, it's awful lot of it. It's good. I'm glad. I'm glad. That's why he disliked it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good stuff. Let me tell you about the best part. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Let me tell you about Fiverr. I know a ton about building, but I don't know anything about computers. We all got something we're good at, but no one's great at everything. Fiverr connects you to the best in-class freelancers experienced in hundreds of digital specialties and every skill imaginable. To help with any project, Gene, I know you're all over Fiverr. I, I was an early adapter to Fiverr. I actually had a few logos created, I don't know, three, four years ago through Fiverr. It literally just matches you to different freelancers. And you say, like, you know, at the time anyway, it was like, uh, you know, for $25, can somebody create this logo for me? And someone's like, can do. And then you message back and forth and work on stuff. And it's so easy. Well, graphic design, copywriting, marketing, web programming, film editing, scoring, music, and more. Find what you've been looking for instantly. Customize your search by service, deadline, price, seller, reviews, and more. Plus, 24-7 customer service. It's Fiverr, right, Dawson? Find a freelancer with the specific skills you need for your next project. Check out, check out Fiverr.com and receive 10% off your first order by using promo code ADAM. Find all the digital services you need in one place at F-I-V-E-R-R.com. Code ADAM. That's Fiverr.com. Code ADAM. All right, we're going to do trending topics with uh, Max Zapata and then Dana Gould in to talk about his great new doc and uh, Yule's Jewels. All that's coming right after this. In the spirit of Murrow, Jennings, Cronkite, here's another great moment in local news. Back here live at the Waterfront Village with my friend, the zombie, Jonathan. You're looking good. Jonathan just got an awesome face paint job. What do you think? I like turtles. All right. That's a great moment in local news. Now, back to the Adam Carolla Show. All right, Max Pat is here. He's got hey. his uh, stories. I've not vetted them. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we're just going to get into the uh, trending topic. All right. So the as as we record this, the number one trending topic right now is Meta M E T A. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really want. That's what what the new. That's the new corporation of Facebook. It's like they changed their corporate name to oh. Meta, but they're still, the, the site and the brand will still be called Facebook, but they're now known but as But like Meta. the stock exchange is no yeah. longer like FB. It's yeah, like yeah. MVRSE, like How Metaverse. How change that? A rebranding. <laughs> like, like Google did it with like Alphabet. Sure. And, that sure. nobody knows about. You yeah, know. you're never, I don't think we'll ever really run into, I mean, who knows? I could, I'm most likely wrong. There goes my Meta stock. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's like when they do the Frank M. Johnson <laughs> Officer Frank M. Johnson Memorial mm-hmm. off ramp. Yeah. Oh, you mean but, the one hundred one? Yeah, that's it's take Exit the one hundred seventy to one hundred one. On like no one ever says it. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. So, I want to know what the fuck happened to Bob New, uh, not Bob New, Bob Hope Airport. Yeah. Burbank was Bob Hope Airport oh. from you know nineteen fifty one to ten minutes ago. They've rebranded Hollywood. Uh, what is it called? Something Hollywood? Burbank. Yeah, Hollywood. Burbank Hollywood. Airport. Hollywood. Burbank yeah. Hollywood uh, Airport. I don't. Did Bob Hope get first canceled? First off, Burbank's <laughs> pretty far from Hollywood. Yes, it is. Number one. <laughs> number two. Well, doesn't now now see there's a thing. Which is an interesting side effect or um, 
piece of, uh, I'm trying to think of, residual effect of woke and canceled. Everyone's getting canceled, mm-hmm. right? So everyone's getting canceled. We're taking down the statues. We're renaming stuff. We, Jefferson statues got to come down from New York. And so when I hear Bob Hope's name used to be yep. on an airport and now it's not what anymore, it's like, what he, he must have done something. Yeah. He did something. <laughs> what came up? He got me too Right. So anyone, uh, and it's uh, Jack Murphy Stadium, too, in, in San, San Diego. Diego. He must have been up to something all those Jack years Murphy. ago. <laughs> Mr. Petco. Yeah, so, people so, flying into to Hollywood for the first time thinking, I'm flying into the Burbank Hollywood. I'm landing right in Hollywood. No, you Far are a $67 Uber <laughs> ride from the Walk of Fame, number one. But number two, I, I don't know. I feel like once... You give the name yeah. to this beloved celeb. And Bob Hope lived in Toluca Lake, famously had lots of acreage mm-hmm. out here and played golf in Toluca Lake and the country club and all that kind of stuff. He he was a valley guy. I don't know. I don't think you just pull it off because you got a, a spanking new cool name that you're going to yeah. get the yeah. kids in from Idaho. But I have a theory, a mm. conspiracy theory, to sort of tie in the whole show together with Mr. Dana Gould, who's going to come in, with Mr. George Takei. Oh. Do you know what I'm going to say about no, Bob Hope? No, but I, I will I will say this. Um, Dana's doing Huel's Jewels. Uh, I don't want to step on it, but Huel had a <laughs> warthog named after him. And in 2017... I think they took it away. Oh. And this airport was renamed, rebranded in 2017, too. So oh, the, there's was, some connection between uh, Bob and Huel. Yellow face? That I don't know. No, I, if I'm remembering correctly from the doc, which is fantastic, by the way, at one point, I believe Dana tells Bobcat Goldthwait that. Bob Hope had, you know, after all the Japanese Americans got interned, Bob went around buying their land for like $2. Oh, well, it seems, so, it seems if they were in the valley. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> but they never said anything. They just rebranded it, I yeah. guess. Well, the number two trending topic. Hold on. Amelia Earhart's had a statue of her yep. lesbian ass in there for, for 40 now. years. Yeah. Bob never, Bob had a bust, I think, in there. Did mm. they remove the bust? Remember, there was just like a bronze head it. of if Bob. If they remove the bust, then he got canceled. You, you <laughs> remove a bust. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're out. All right. But I really want to talk about the number two trending topic, uh, which is uh, spelled similar to M E T A. It's P E T A. PETA. Mm. So they are the number two trending t- topic. We're going to talk about rebranding. So I'll just give you a little bit of history before we get into it. So 96, remember PETA asked the town of Fishkill, New York right. to rename itself to Fish Save. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because, uh, but the name Kill is Dutch for Creek. Uh, in 2009, PETA tried to rebrand Fish as Sea Kittens. Mm-hmm. So it wouldn't, you wouldn't feel as bad or you would feel more bad when you would go fishing and, and, uh, and hurting the fish. Uh, and <laughs> I fish for kittens, so joke's on them. Yeah. I remember they had that whole thing a couple years ago, like, don't say beat a dead horse, say feed a fed horse and, yes. and things like the that. The thing yes. about PETA, I've always said this, like, at some point, well, it's kind of like, I was talking to uh, the great Donny Osmond yesterday. Yeah. And you go like, well, what happened with Michael Jackson? And you go, well, at a certain point, you get so big that everyone around you becomes like a, a yes person. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And you don't have that person in your life. Right who can tell you steer to you. steer you away from, because everyone's on, on the payroll. And I feel like organizations need that too. Like PETA needed that 12 years ago. You know what I mean? Because someone would just come in and go, I've done some research. I'm going to show you a graph. Like it show up to the boardroom at the, at the PETA meeting and go, uh, in terms of experimenting on puppies and kittens and putting a shampoo and conditioner in their eyes and seeing if it gets infected. 96% of Americans agree with you on this subject. Now, you comparing killing roaches to the Holocaust, you've got 0.2% of Americans and they're in this fucking room. So I don't know what you're doing here, but you want to keep going, you're going to fucking lose. You'll lose everybody. Yeah. You want to yeah. change the name to uh, kill from fish kill save. fish to fish save. Let me check my data here. It's just it's just someone going. I don't give a shit. It's yeah. a picture of someone who doesn't give a shit. So don't keep going down this road. You're going to lose stock. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, they're going down this road, oh. but th- but this one's a little different. So they're now they're heading back to baseball, mm-hmm. and they have started a campaign to get rid of the word bullpen. Where you oh know where the bullpen, the bullpen. Is, you know? sure, it's where the. Uh, 
the pitchers warm up. The the pita, you know, it's 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 such an uphill battle because the pita attempt to like stop having people eating smoked ribs, you know what I mean? <sighs> It's right up there with, with when the religious right was like, you wait till marriage. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, hot 17-year-old, you wait another decade before you have intercourse. Sure. Like, good fucking luck. There's nothing people like more than fucking and ribs. <laughs> like, you're, you're fucking Army Hammer amen. likes both. They're, they're, they're Gina, certain. Please. <laughs> But they're like, there's certain things like Americans can kind of go like, look, you can't park in the handicapped spot. Mm-hmm. I know it's close to the front of the Costco. And you go, nah, I'll find a spot 80 right. feet away. I'll walk. Like, man, but good luck going no fucking and no rib eating. Mm. Yeah. That no mm. Reuben sandwiches, no blowjobs. Like against that. Humanity. That's, that's un-American. a tough fucking mm. sell. Yeah. Yeah. That was about my exact internal monologue. Like, are they going to? Are they going to get rid of my fucking and rib eating right now with That's baseball? Right. And then I saw what they want to change it to. The bullpen? Arm barn. Arm the, barn? The arm barn. Yeah. Where, where they warm up the arms yeah. in the barn. And I, I kind of like it. I don't know. <laughs> it kind of has, has It's close a, to the yarn barn. I don't hate it. And mm-hmm. in fact, I kind of like it. And I think that'd be kind of cool. Like, like uh, Kenley Chance is coming out of the uh. yarn barn to <laughs> the arm barn. See, you can't say it. Right. Well, it's new. It's brand mm-hmm. new. Arm barn. They want to change it to the arm barn. What they're saying is um, words matter. <laughs> and baseball bullpens devalue talented players and mock the misery of sensitive animals. All right? Because these are where the bulls are kept for Do you slaughter. Think the bulls but are aware of this? Yeah, we don't keep bulls. You know, that's this is not a but thing that's happening. But animals are kept oh, in yeah. a pen. Just, I mean, that's just how that's where they're kept. You got to control the language here, guys. That's that's what they, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to rebrand, progress. Yeah, but again, I, are arm they, barn. I feel like they should be working on the Impossible Burger and how yeah. to get those into the school system or something like that. This 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 is just publicity, right? This is just and a, ironically, a nothing burger. I mean, it's like, you're right. Nothing burger. Like, you know, we, you know, companies do that thing where it's like uh, Mattel says Mr. Potato Head is by Curious. And you're like, no, you guys haven't (laughs) sold one in 40 years. You're not. You're you're so full of shit. You're just trying to get on the front of Breitbart and get some get some news, get some action that that's this is just them doing that. Right. So you don't think arm barn's going to happen? I don't think it's going to catch on. You you know who's next in the crosshairs? Hmm. Pigpen. Oh, the pig from, pen. From, this, from, uh, uh, Snoopy. 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 Yeah. Yeah. The peanuts, peanuts. yeah. Mm-hmm. This room is a pigsty. Yeah, yeah, and from the Grateful Dead. Mm-hmm. There's a pig pen there? There's a... I'm not it's sad. I only know the... Huh? It's awesome. sad. Yeah. I only know the peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> really keyboard player, I think. I have the great, I'm not a deadhead, but the, they do have a pig head. Huh? Wrong. I mean a pig <laughs> pen. <laughs> pig pen. Pig arm. Yeah, Adam and I are lettuce guys. Yeah. Um. you? Are you watching the World Series at all? Um, I've, I've just been catching bits and pieces of it. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's fun to put on. Now, Charlie Morton, the, the pitcher for the Braves second. Oh, yeah. Oh, this poor gets guy. a 102 mile per hour come back right at his fibula. Yeah. And bre- uh, he breaks it still pitches like 16, 16. pitches. Yeah. Strikes out Jose Altuve. Yeah. On the broken leg. Yeah. I love it. Man. Now the Braves have to win, right? Cause that's no, all that's part of the lore. Badass. That's, that's the bloody sock of kind of for Atlanta. Yeah, it's good. It's yeah, the bloody sock of uh, Kurt, Kurt Schilling. Schilling. Yeah. yeah, it's it's uh, it's kind of good for him because he didn't wuss out. He won another inning, and but he was legitimately broken, you know. And yeah. and if his team wins, he's going to be celebrated as a hero. But he doesn't have to get out there and worry about being shelled. Even if he doesn't, <laughs> if it, if he's not broken, you took a hundred mile an hour comebacker off the fucking shin. Right. You're allowed to take a few days off. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> Um, all right, well, let's let's move on to another another thing that's that's been trending recently. Uh, there's a girl named. Here's a thought. All right, tell me what you guys think of this thought. Okay. In terms of uh, baseball modification, um, you cannot. They will not let you use an aluminum bat in the major leagues because the ball will come off the bat another 15, 20 miles an hour faster, sure. and someone's going to get killed. Mm-hmm. Like some pitcher's going to get killed or whatever. So okay, that's that argument. Like okay, it's uh, it's too much. Yeah, it's too fast. It's too dangerous. But some of these baseball players, man, these are some big dudes. Now, when I was coming up, you just look at the, uh, you know, the Dodgers infield. Steve Garvey, five foot eight. You know, Ron Safe, 
the Penguin, like five foot nine. Davy Lopes, five foot nine. You know what I mean? Like that whole infield and the outfield probably averaged five, ten and a half, 169 pounds or something. These weren't big. Right. Baseball players are big dudes now. Yeah. And the home runs are like, oh, he crushed that thing. It's 470 feet. Like these things are going. Some of those home runs, the outfielder's not stepping back. It's right. just missiles. Right. right know, off blasted the bat. off in it. You know. Do we start to get into a place where we make the bat out of a softer Nerf. wood? Like like Balsa we, bat. we <laughs> Yeah, well whatever whatever the math is. I mean, there's hardwood, there's softwood. I think it's ash. They I probably make uh, the bats. Typical, yeah. Can you do uh, that, but, though, because of all the history that everybody else has been using on the maple bats? You really want to give people softer bats? Yeah, and- I, I guess. I'm just putting it out there. I don't know if you went to Alder or <laughs> I'm going to go deep into the species of wood here. Poplar. Poplar, <laughs> Alder. Like, yeah, if you went go. to a softer wood, <laughs> would you get uh, would you get a little less pop? I guess you would. You, uh, you would, but it but... would screw up the <laughs> screw up the record. And the MLB that. would hate that. Yeah, I was going to say I can go to the mat saying that'll never happen. They would. It's we'll never see arm happen, before but it's we see soft. Well, no, bats. it it will happen mm-hmm. if a couple killed. of pitchers get if some pitcher gets killed. Yeah, which could oh. happen. You you get hit in the face with that ball that that could take you down. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, so it's going to take Somebody something like that. Yeah. All right, let, let's move over to to Instagram. Um, do you do you remember uh, after the George Floyd protest, there was that girl who who went up and got the guy's drill and was like, "Oh, let me let me." Uh, and he had her take a picture of her holding the drill, oh, yeah. and she like handed it back like, the here, "Here it is." Girl, yeah, yeah. she was oh, like, "Sure." Remember this video? It was all I, I over t- like t- LeBron t- tweeted about a, it uh, for a, a riot or something. Yeah, and then I after never the picture, saw it. oh, here. Uh, so she she takes the picture, and then after the picture, she says, "Thanks." Gives the drill back to the guy. Gets in a Mercedes. Gets in a Mercedes and drives off. Feels right? stage. It's so on the nose. Yeah, everybody. She got doxxed. Like her license plate was in that photo, and people found out who she was. Turns out she's a journalist, and she wrote a piece about it in USA Today because she had to delete her account. Like she was getting threats. It was mm. it was a huge deal. Now, I, well, it feels staged. It was staged, but you mean staged double and then staged, staged. As, opposed, yeah. as, uh, as to show like just to yes, create uh, buzz about yeah, it. What was she trying to accomplish? Well, here, Kim, okay, start from the beginning again. So she just goes up while they're while they're uh, doing the plywood, and then she. She asked for the drill. She just, it looks like she's just trying to take a picture because like you want that Instagram clout, yeah, right? I'm you want the, the lights. side of the. Yeah, uh, I'm here like, to help. This was, there was a lot of people during the protests who were like coming out in like Black Lives Matter gowns, posing with the march, and then getting back in the car. That was a thing. Yeah, exactly. No, I get, I get that, but putting up sheets of plywood, you're helping. You're helping rebuild after all the the protests and everything. Is was, this before the? But I feel like this oh, might is, have been you put up the plywood before the. <laughs> this is uh, not structural. <laughs> it's not, yeah. not sheer wall. <laughs> they're they're trying to. I'll make a bad the Where's the stucco guy? <laughs> no, it's a it's a sheer glass wall, <laughs> and there's going to be a Black Lives Matter protest, and this is suggesting that they're going to be unruly and loot this place. So I I don't know what side of the aisle you're getting points good, from. Good question. Putting no. this up. Yeah, but anyway, I don't think it would have said what you wanted it to say. Right. But I think it's this. I, I'm on. I'm on the side of these small businesses or whatever. Yeah, okay. I said Black action. Lives Matter as she, as she left. I don't it. like the fact she's using using a Ryobi cordless drill. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's not my. That's not. That's, that's not going to drive my any, brand. any screw. No. Um, well, Bosch, Makita. <laughs> well, her name's Milwaukee. Fiona Moriarty McLaughlin. Mm-hmm. McLaughlin. She wrote this piece about like, hey, I just did it, and then these guys were kind of yelling at me, so I I got felt like I, I was in danger and, and left, and they they filmed our they filmed my license plate and they doxed me, and it was a terrible experience for her. Well, there's a there's a girl now that's kind of getting this a similar treatment. Her name's Jane Rivera. She's 20, and her dad just died. But she she posted okay. she posted these pictures from her dad's funeral oh, on her no. Instagram, oh, boy. and it's her oh, wearing Jesus. a fitted black one sleeve blazer dress as she stood right in front of her father's coffin. It Showing says, there, there's a few of them. It says "Butterfly Fly Away, R.I.P. Poppy, you were my best friend. It's a life well lived." And she's looking very fabulous. Is the mm. funeral being held at a VFW? It looks like it's a classroom. Yeah. Well, uh, that's open casket, open blouse. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Open so she. Oh, oh, come yeah. on. Yeah, I know. Oh. Yeah. So she's. If you swipe. She did a there, sexy pick. She does a sexy pick, and you can see the dad's like arms folded on top of him with the. There's an American flag. Feels like this is about her. I, I feel <laughs> like. I feel like my my last viewing so of my father. My last viewing went very differently. Oh really? Yeah. There was not. You a had camera. two sleeves. Yeah. Right. <laughs> How old do you think she is? 
I, I, she's 20. 20. She's 20. 20, yes. I'm not sure if That's anyone horrible. under 30, any attractive woman, knows how to take a picture where she doesn't sex it up a mm. little bit. It's like they're so mm. used to doing, Being like, someone coquettish. gets a camera and you go, here's my yeah, pose. Yeah. I don't know if they have a reflective or somber pose. I feel <laughs> like all, uh, yeah, pensive. I feel like Look all they the do is that pose. And so I feel like when the camera comes out, whether they're in front of a casket or it's spring break in Palm Springs, they just do the same pose. Yeah. It's a little tone deaf, but I, I, I it feels almost muscle memory. Like that, yeah. that's it all is. you do from for the last Seven years. That's the only thing she's done. Let's see the, the rest. Oh my picture. god. Let's see the rest of the pictures. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, we might not have those, those oh. loaded yet. But I mean, they're all similar to this. And you're right, Adam. Like I see, I see pictures, like group pictures of girls, and they all know to like stand the same way and put their arm out, mm -hmm. like, and it, it, it's it's uh, symmetrical. It's right. really, it's really bizarre just how fall in line. They all just get it. It's also fascinating because I had to do this investigative thing, whatever, for KFI a long time ago, where I had to go to a mortuary and film like and talk about how it works and the embalming process and all this stuff. And the mortuary was really strict because I was there. One of the days I was there, there was a class like learning. And he said, I, I know that, you know, seeing a dead body, whatever it can. You don't have control. You could start laughing. You could start crying. You start giggling. You don't know how you're going to react. If you have that feeling, excuse yourself right away. We are in the presence of a dead mm -hmm. body. Like this is a thing to be respectful. Expected. And like it was a really big deal. So so con contrast that with a girl in her finest frock giving the come hither look is pretty shocking. Yeah, she looks really this, hot. Um, Jesus. She looks hot. I, I feel like somebody should have got her before she left the house. <laughs> like, I don't know if mom's alive or they're, they were divorced, you know, older sister. Mm. Yeah. Somebody should have tapped her on her oh covered shoulder, yeah. not the bare one, <laughs> the one yeah. and uh, asked her if she could just go ahead and get something that was a little more appropriate. Tone it down for the funeral. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. well, people have been tapping her on her shoulder now because she had to delete her account. People <laughs> were best. so upset right. with her making it, making this funeral like, about it's her. It's her dad. Well, I ask all the time, but who are the people? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, who is going, I'm going to take the time to right. settle her hash. Oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. That's uh, if you're if, if you're on the internet like you, you people do that all the time. Now, I know they do. I could just never figure out right. like, I I have a very what's in it for me kind of mentality. Yeah, not and, everyone else does. Well, I can tell you what's in it for them. It's such low-hanging fruit to jump on the correct side and point the finger. It's too tempting for most people not to do it. But when you've joined 18 million people, mm. how does how I, you know, I've always felt like, how do you, how do you, how, what, what is distinguished about that? Mm. Like everyone is just, it's low hanging fruit. Everyone grabs for mm. it. You're just another one of the yeah. peasants that gram. Yeah. Why, what's, uh, why is it satisfying? Yeah, I guess would be my, question. my answer. I was once of a mind where I thought like, oh, and a girl like this does a thing like this and this happens to her. You know what? Unfortunate, but you know what? Tough love. Uh, she'll learn a lesson early yeah. in life that opens to kind of carry forward and change the behavior. But now maybe that was naive because now I'm like, she's, Probably going to be defiant and be like, you know, I live my truth or yeah. whatever. You know, how dare you people? Well, well she took she, it down, she, right? She, she, she deleted, well, yeah, she removed her Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, she said, look, uh, she, she, she's done an interview and she said, I wanted to treat the celebration as if my father was next to me posing for the camera as That's we had pose done next to your on many occasions mm -hmm. prior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, she was getting destroyed Poor online. Thing. Poor thing. Yeah, and I, yeah, I feel bad. But well, look, and there, there used to be a trend of people, I don't even know if it was a trend, of people were just bringing it to light, where kids, like on the birthright trips that you go to, like the concentration camps and stuff, were like, oh. peace signs, like, mm -hmm. woo! Oh, sure. and it was oh, fucking vile. And that's one thing. But like, if this is how they roll in her family, like maybe that's just her business. I, I don't know. Yeah. You know? Yeah, well, they're, they're, like she's 20, so she is the perfect age for what, like that Facebook report. Right. Like, there's something chemically going on. Right. With with girls and, and Instagram and getting all all this attention, so oh, there's so much documentation. It's just going to be weird, you know what I mean? I mean, I've said it before, but I I think my dad from age zero to thirty, it's probably seven pictures of him, <laughs> maybe seven. True. Like if someone said, I want to know what Jim Carolla looked like when he was a junior in high school. Me too. Good fucking luck. <laughs> Go get a 
courtroom sketch artist and see if you can <laughs> redo something or computer simulated something. There's Police no sketch. I've never even seen. I, like I've, I've seen. You know, I haven't seen a picture of my dad when he was twelve. Yeah. Or 17 or something. There's a couple of scattered, oh, this is the wedding picture, and this is you at three in a sailor suit on the Seeing roof. your portrait or whatever. Yeah, right. maybe, but I mean, just imagine just pictures everywhere they've been. Yes. You know, every every spring break geocached. and every road trip and every yep. any But that wasn't job. a choice, like, because he didn't have the opportunity that we have, where we have a camera on us every second that we I know. can do this. I, do, does I, anyone want to take a guess how many pictures, photos are currently on my phone? No. Take a guess. Random guess. 1,500. Okay. I'll say way more. 28,000. Uh, oh, jeez. I'll go, I'll go um, 4,000. 53,025. Oh, oh, my. Wow. I'm such a dick. I don't take <laughs> pictures of people. I take pictures of stuff. Yeah, yeah. this is all my you stuff. Know, son, by the way. Sean's over there working on the big ball spinner, you know, and right. it's really cool. And I'm like, okay, Sean, step out. Step out. I'm gonna get I'm gonna chronicle this. I need you posing you next sent to me that photo. Adam sent me that photo. <laughs> I <laughs> take pictures of cars and stuff and trash Dogs and, and weeds. What about brunch? Uh, I never take pictures of people. I take pictures of stuff. Stop. What was the last selfie you took? I don't know how to do it. I don't think he knows I, how to I, turn I, his, I, his, I, face, I, I, his front sure facing camera times. around. Okay, yeah, sure. I couldn't pull a selfie off. <laughs> but if I'm ever the uh, victim of domestic abuse, I will take the super sad yeah. selfie. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, that, yeah. You, you'll get a lot of attention. All right. Well, Dana Gould is here. Yeah, let's, let's get Which him means uh, Hules Jules awaits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Liquid IV, man. It's important. You uh, work out daily. It's it's hotter in the hubs of hell out there, man. You want to uh, hydrate. And even in the cooler weather, sometimes you miss the signs of dehydration. Flu season is upon us. It's important for your immune system to be properly hydrated. Not to mention the dreaded hangover, which I had last Sunday. (laughs) I travel with this stuff. Dawson travels with it. It's the best. I mean, you don't always have to drink someone's Gatorade at the airport. You can travel with liquid (laughs) IV. One stick of liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates faster and more effectively than water alone. Five essential vitamins, more vitamin C than an orange, as much potassium as a banana. And uh, no artificial flavors or preservatives, less sugar than apple. Comes in uh, flavor. Strawberry, lemon, lime, pina colada, guava, watermelon. It's Liquid IV, right, Dawson? Grab your favorite Liquid IV flavors nationwide at Walmart. Or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code ADAM and check out this 25% off anything you order when you get better hydration today using promo code ADAM at liquidiv.com. Well, Dana Gould, comedian extraordinaire, is going to join us right after this. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Hey, Adam. It's Brad, Jensen Beach, Florida. Get it on. Got an idea for the rebranding of nuclear energy. We need to call it transformative energy, or short, trans energy. That way, nobody will ever be able to talk negatively about it again. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Dana Gould has joined us. The documentary, it's a documentary concert film. It's called Joyride. It premieres in theaters and on demand today as you hear this. It's uh, Dana, it's Bobcat, Goldthwait. Uh, they're on the road. Uh, full transparency, I just watched the trailer. And the trailer's really funny, and it's really hard to cut a funny trailer. It just is. Even if the movie's funny, it's hard, and the trailer was really funny. And, of course, I've known Bob for all those years. But uh, let's talk about that, Dana. Where, yeah. how did? Wh- what's your history of Bobcat? Well, Bob and I used to hate each other's guts, which is what <laughs> makes our friendship sort of interesting in the movie. Um, Bobcat uh, and I have known each other since the 80s. Bob lived in Boston with uh, these two guys, Dan Spencer and Tom Kenny. Tom Kenny, now the right. famous as the voice of SpongeBob. And then Bob moved to San Francisco and I moved to Boston and I became friends with Dan Spencer and Tom Kenny. Mm. And and when I came back, I was like the new wife. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, we got off on the wrong foot and it went downhill from there. Uh, and uh, it took 
12 years before we kind of like <laughs> warmed up to each other. And now he's one of my, I mean, he's, he's one of my closest friends. And we ended up doing a tour together only to like, wanted to get out of the clubs and do a one nighter. You know, mm-hmm. you know how that's better. Sure. You're not at Uncle Lucky's Chuckle Hutch through the whole weekend. <laughs> I'll be at McGooby's Joke <laughs> yeah. House on November 5th right. in I'm Baltimore. At, I'm at Scroats next Scrotes. weekend in Dearborn. Uh, so we did that and, and then uh, we decided, hey, let's film this as a as a show because we mm-hmm. did it. A, we ended up, I'll be, I'm trying to make this really brief. We would go on stage together. Fart around for a couple of minutes, then I'd flip a coin. We'd flip a coin to decide who went on first and who went on second. People liked it more when we were just dicking around, so we decided to stay and mm-hmm. do the whole show together. And we quickly, in the moment, figured out how to do it. I know his inventory; he knows mine. Right. And we would just kind of pass it off back and forth. And the shows would go like two hours, two hours thirty minutes. Feel like a half an hour because you know you're conversing and the audience is involved. And they were just great shows. That let's film it. We're pulling into the venue to film it, and we get in a terrible car accident. Oh, that was mm-hmm. the first night you were yeah, going to film? Yeah, that was the first night we were going to film it. Uh, right. Wow. So Harbinger. Uh, yeah, we, exactly. <laughs> this is going to be great. <laughs> and then uh, speaking of Harbinger, so we, we recovered. That was in August of 2019. Were you uh, in an Uber? I mean, it was a no, Camry we were in a car. Right? Yeah, it was a regular car. We were... Uh, Four blocks from the venue, so we w- didn't sit. Uh, we didn't put on our seatbelts. Bob sat in the back. I was going to sit in the passenger seat. Uh, the driver's dog, which was a French bulldog, was sitting in the passenger seat, and they went to tell the dog to get out, and I went, no, 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 that's all right. I'll just sit in the back. I don't right. care. My low self-esteem saved my life. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because if I was sitting in the passenger seat, I would have been, at the most, severely after yeah because the and whole it, side was caved it was in. all gone yeah it was all gone and um, how's the dog the dog lived the dog has since passed but oh, the dog okay. lived because the size of a ham it just went on the floor <laughs> um and then so we and then we filmed it we recovered filmed the shows in february of 2020 february of 2020 and the future <laughs> looked great right. <laughs> smooth sailing Sky's clear skies skies. right and then because of covid bob had time to make it into something else and so what it became is a hybrid of a concert film us driving between the gigs talking about how we used to not like each other and now we became friends and going over our our very similar you know childhoods in the east coast with you know weird hunty, drinky families, and Bob's burning down the Tonight Show and, you know, and my, my own crap. Um, destroying Arsenio set. Destroying Arsenio set. And, and yeah, and really, it, it doesn't, it's not a story of how we became comedians, but it is a story of why we became comedians. Mm. And it's 70 minutes and it, uh, it, it really flies by. It's very funny and it's, it's, I dare say it, it's, it's very sweet. It's, uh, you know. Bob's a sweet guy. He You're is. a sweet guy. Bob was a star when he was 19 or something. Yeah, I mean, he, he was on Letterman when he was 19. And uh, uh, in Boston at the time, it like really bummed out the other mm. comedians because they they felt like there's a line. No, it's your you cut the line. <laughs> right. There's no line, brother. <laughs> well, also, you know, it's kind of interesting because I've, I've, I've thought about this as it pertains to Bostonians. And I pointed out a couple of times, which is after being at the Superdome in New Orleans when uh, the Patriots beat the Rams in 01, I guess. I I started noticing that the Boston fans, the Patriots fans weren't celebrating. They were ridiculing the Rams fans right. after the game. So I thought it's kind of interesting because uh, San Francisco, Arizona, Pittsburgh, they win a Super Bowl. Los Angeles, they're out celebrating. But their thing was to kind of go after. They celebrated by attacking the yeah, fans. Yeah, it's New England. Right, it's New England. So... <laughs> Comedians are competitive, and, you know, if you're from L.A. or New York, you understand sometimes people get on Letterman before you do. Yeah. But given the, the, given the Bostonian mindset, if you got on to Letterman before a 30-year-old comedian did, then you jumped the line, and then we're not happy for you. Right. Yeah. We're angry at you, right? Yeah, and I – yes, and I, uh, I started when I was 17 – and there was a, a bo- there was a comedy competition, you know, so because what's it's like a painter's competition, <laughs> yeah. but they did it. And uh, I was 18 or 19 and it was me and all of the other Boston heavyweights. 
mm-hmm. Lenny, Cl- you know, all the Lenny other guys, Clark. all these guys in their late twenties, early thirties, and I won. And that enraged him. Sure. Um, you were embraced it, by the community? Uh, no, it, no, it wasn't. And, uh, you know, uh, so we, it was, there was a lot, it, yeah, it's a very interesting, you know, th- it's not a warm embracing culture. The best story, the best example of that kind of mentality of, of, of how effusive Bostonians are. This I wish this story happened to me. It was a friend of mine. Very similar upbringing, very similar kind of dad. To, never told his dad he loved him, and then finally, much later in life, he said to his dad, "Hey, Dad, I love you." And his father went, "Hey, no problem." <laughs> 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 that's pretty much. Oh, the, that's the, pretty much the only gushing you're gonna get. Abusive. <laughs> well, it, it's fertile soil for comedy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a reason a lot of com- there's a reason a lot of loud, angry comedians come out of that culture. And and you know. A bobcat, you know, then he was a star, basically. It was movies and yeah. t- TV and, and all that. Name. Yeah, he was pretty household name, pretty mainstream yeah. guy. I used to remember seeing him at Kevin and Bean, you know, in 1994, sure. 1995. And then he starts getting into directing, and then we're bringing him over to the man show to direct bits right. at, at, at some point. And then goes really like avant-garde direct, yeah. like deep. Cut lying with you know, dogs. Yeah, just just crazy, <laughs> interesting well, stuff. And he he talks about it in the documentary. The whole, I mean, the whole thing about Bob and I'm, you know, he's my friend. I feel like and I was with him. We flew in. We were in Portland this morning, and we flew <laughs> back. And he's on a plane now, but um, uh, you know, Bob's act was a parody of a comedian. Uh, you know that whole thank you very much thank you very much right. that was his idea of like who is the last person on earth that should be doing stand up <laughs> comedian this character who's so nervous he's and his voice is cracking yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a parody of a comedian and he then was it basically exploded. doing Chris Farley interviewing yeah. Paul McCartney <laughs> remember exactly, that time exactly, you were in the Beatles yeah. right that was and, awesome and that when was awesome. he <laughs> started doing things like setting the Tonight Show on fire and destroying Arsenio he said like I wasn't thinking this would be good for my career I was thinking I'm done with my career I hate I don't enjoy being on camera I don't enjoy becoming this carnival act and he was trying to destroy his career and the harder he tried the more famous he got it's like I set the tonight show on fire and they booked me on Regis and Kathy Lee I couldn't right. I couldn't win and uh, he finally did walk away and and started making movies and he's an uh, he's an amazing director I mean this film Again, it's his movie. He directed it and cut it. I'm just in it because I'm handsome. Um, but uh, that was a joke. Um, I think you are. Thank you. Go ahead. Jawline you can cut butter with. <laughs> but uh, he made it into a story that wasn't there. You know, there was a, it was just stand-up footage, and he really built it into a story with a beginning and a middle and an end, you know. And, and, and the arc of the story is that we did not like each other. <laughs> And then, uh, and then there's some footage of Bob being really shitty to me. Oop, if I can say that, I'm, of course, okay. yeah, I wasn't sure. Um, and then we kind of like when we became adults, uh, mm-hmm. we kind of like realized we have so much in common. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. Well, and there's I. I I love it. I, I'm going to watch it again tonight. Oh, like two well. viewings. I love it. Thank and you. I feel like in a Variety way. Variety just gave it a positive review. And as they, they yeah. should. They say something crappy. And I feel like it has a Simpsons element that I have to watch it Trans again. Trans community, it, not fans. But keep going. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> I have to watch it again because I know there are things I missed. Like little, I noticed like a little nuance that I'm sure was Bob when he was, you know, cutting it. He's, you know, shitting on, um, Eh, that's my term, not his. But he's talking about you know, comedians in cars getting coffee and Jerry yeah, and their kind funny. of rivalry. It's in the trailer. And, oh, okay, and then he talks about They're you know very famous friends. Just a, <laughs> just a, you know a couple of guys in a car with a GoPro. The next scene, it's you guys it's in, a in a car, car with a GoPro. It's just, <laughs> it's just great. It's great. Yeah, we're we're we, the, we couldn't have done this movie ten years ago. Uh, and one of the reasons is egotistically, like I'm fine being on stage with somebody and letting them get a laugh. And that's something that you learn over time. There's not a finite amount of laughter. If you get some, it doesn't mean there's less for me. And as adults, you know, it's like we are, if nothing else, over ourselves. And mm-hmm. that's what allows us to to do this, uh, you know, as a, as a two-hander. And I'm fine to let, you know, I, I'm happy to be in the parade. I'm happy to watch the parade. 
uh, they're both fine. So a couple of thoughts. First off, I'm with you on the laughter. It's, yeah. Not, it's not like pussy where there's a finite there's amount. A finite I have amount. to take all of it. And one gender <laughs> controls its supply. <laughs> but it is part of my theory about men get saner and women get crazier mm. as they get older. Like, you know, you probably, maybe you wouldn't have wanted to go on the, go on road on the road with Bobcat right. when Bobcat was 26 or maybe not Dana Gould when he was 23, but there's something about getting mm. older as a dude. You it's mellow. so much, life is so much more comfortable. I agree a hundred percent. You just don't care nearly <laughs> en- uh, enough you know, about anything. It's like that old St- Steve Martin did a bit like this back in the seventies. He goes, the greatest thing about getting older is that you get prejudiced. Mm-hmm. It's not against people, but just about like, let's try this new thing. <laughs> right. That's all right. No, I'm yeah, I'm good. <laughs> That's fine. I'm set my ways. <laughs> all right. Should we do a little uh, Huel's Jewels? Because who, who? Uh, it's been uh, too long and we have some. You know, uh, the great Allison Martino, who has the Instagram. Uh, uh, vintage LA, uh, mm-hmm. which is really great, yeah. uh, and she has she'll just find like footage of like driving down Sunset Boulevard in 1966. I saw it last it's week. It's so great. Yeah, and she just published a Huel going to the Pig and Whistle oh. in 1999. Oh. Well, Fantastic. speaking of pig, pig and whistle, go- which was also for him, just like shorthand for a night out. <laughs> <laughs> he's going. Uh, speaking of pigs, going to LA Zoo, and they're going to talk warthogs. It's time to take a walk down memory lane. This is very artsy. And rediscover Huel's Jewels. Here the greatest is the main man. With Dana Gould. Doing so much to leave a rich heritage for all of us in California to enjoy today. (laughs) All right, well, we'll play our first clip. It's uh, Huel's going to set up a uh, Warthog update. (laughs) Again. (laughs) There he goes. I've never heard it called that. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Huell Hauser, and you know what? Time marches on. Let me give you an example. I started at KCET a little over 25 years ago, and when I first started at the station, I wasn't hosting California's Goal. That hadn't even been thought up yet. I was hosting a series of short little programs, two, three, four, five-minute segments called Video Logs that aired between the regular programs on the station. They were interstitial programs. That went on for four or five years before we moved into the programs that we're doing today. So long story short, I was in the office the other day looking through some of these old video I bet it wasn't his office. And long story short is not a line you associate with Huell Hauser. No. (laughs) Sorry, you can, is he finished? Oh, no, far more. from it. Oh, there's Come more. On. Oh, sorry. Long right. story <laughs> short, snow, snow, fall, leaves, <laughs> summer, <laughs> leaves, long white yeah. beard. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. DT. This had to be 1984, maybe even 1983. It was early on. I looked like a teenager in these things. Anyway, the program that I looked at, the video log I was looking at, was called Warthogs. We came to the Los Angeles Zoo in search of warthogs, and boy, did we find them. I had a great time looking at this old video log from 1983, 1984. Uh-huh. And so what we're going to do right now is take another look at the warthog video log, and then we'll be back for a warthog update. Oh, boy. He's in search of at the place where they hand you a detailed map upon entry. Right. Well, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, they, you get a color map with <laughs> arrows on it. Now, warts on, wart and hog are also oh, expressions God. that you often find on an insurance form. <laughs> Why did you go to the dermatologist first thing in the morning after Fleet Week? Check all the ply. <laughs> warts are warts are God's gift. I find them interesting. They show up in different places on your body like little friends. Well, I, I look at him. He was sort of a God speed bump, kind of telling you to slow it well, down. You know what your, I mean? For your, it could be like speed bumps in a mall, or it could be like raised bumps for your pleasure. It just keeps things exciting. <laughs> mm. So, Huel, uh, why the warthog? I mean, there's other animals. God's created many, many different creatures. Well, warthogs are interesting in that they're always rooting around. And I find if you have a little friend that you've maybe met at a bar or a 
club and they wake up the next morning in a room they don't remember and they're duct taped in specific areas. They're also rooting around oh, looking for that tiny line of sunlight. Where's the door? Where's the seam? Mm-hmm. There's my little warthogs, which brings me to the trans community. I find the only time people will get very upset is when you give them gender reassignment against their will. Oh, yeah. yeah that, that, would... that is, and I will grant anybody this, that is a sticky wicket. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> that is, is covered sticky. with stick. That, that's when you get into legalese. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. like to call it making mischief. Mm, yeah, I, I can see that. I mean, obviously, if you sign up for <laughs> Gender reassignment surgery. That's that's one thing, but it's, it's performed on you after you've possibly been drugged. Yeah. And are Look, if rooting you, around maybe. If you there's a there's a there's a <laughs> if you ever uh, go to the caramel wrist and you're sitting at the bar and I say hi and you say hi back. That's my uh, to me. That's consent. That's consent. Then do oh, okay. what you will, Doctor Frankenstein. <laughs> Usually, you got years of counseling for yeah. you. Yeah. Have run. a drink, lay down in the back, and the next thing you know, you're whoever. I want you to be. Should we play uh, Huel now at the zoo in 1983? We're oh. going back to Huel oh, as a teenager. There he is. It's a monkey, a chimpanzee. 1983. Oh, there he is. A lot of pastels. Amongst the children. All the family, all the kids. Spend the day looking at the animals. They're the elephants, the mountain goats. You can watch a bear take a bath, and the monkeys will keep you amused for hours. They're all so cute. Oh, but by you the way, certainly, I haven't watched a bear take a bath since Labor Day weekend at Wilford Brimley's. <laughs> It's just programming for you know, l- learning disabled seven year olds. Like this is pr- this is for adults. Like it. it uh, it's, it's, well, well, but also, Huel has never met a shirt that he won't tuck yeah. in. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like untuck that thing. Chill oh, when, when he goes to the dentist and gets X rays and they give you that <laughs> lead vest, he's like, like, "All right, <laughs> let me get my doctor's help." Just that guy is. Button down. He tucks in every shirt. You're right, but he can pull it off. Yeah, all uh, the all the loose sexuality of Jack Webb. <laughs> <laughs> all right, sorry. So are we still in the second one, Chris? I always get confused with you. I never know if we got to the end of it or no, not. That, that was there the is no end. It's, right. it's a loop. It's just a it's a Mobius painting. <laughs> So Huel is yeah. now going to talk to a nun. Yeah, young oh, Huel about boy. warthogs. A lot of people would say they're ugly. What would you say? I think they're ugly. (laughs) All of God's creatures are ugly. Can you say something nice about the warthog? (laughs) Their coloring is very soft gray. That is lovely. That's good. (laughs) Their color's gray. Can you say something nice about the warthog? Or do you say they deserve whatever they can? (laughs) (laughs) It's it's not, obviously it's not a scripted show, but when you walk up to a nun randomly who's standing outside of a warthog pen at the zoo and ask her about one of God's creatures, you have to expect you're going to get an affirmative, right? Yeah. Let's say I wanted to shave a warthog and try to enroll it in a public school. <laughs> or take someone from a public school and make them my own warthog. <laughs> All right, we have a, uh, you'll see a baby warthog oh. in 1987. Now, baby warthogs look just about like big warthogs, oh, don't boy. they? <laughs> yes, they do. They don't yeah. really have all the, the warts, which are the... <laughs> <laughs> the bumps that they have, which is actually skin, but they're the male has the warts, which are more prominent in the males already. This little guy right here on the end. Uh huh. And then the two females are pretty much identical, although one's larger than the other one. Now the question that I've been hearing all over the zoo all morning. Oh boy. Yes, I'm what have you about. named? these baby warthogs. Scuttlebutt. Well, we're trying to come up with good hog names. So <laughs> we're, uh, we're thinking along the lines of um, Daisy here on the end, Ethel here in the middle, 
<laughs> and then the little male we thought we'd call Huel. <laughs> you know, legendary so porn star <laughs> Ron Jeremy had a nickname. Maybe you call him Ron. He named his hog. <laughs> the male, the males have the warts, which is one of the many things that wart hogs have in common with the drama club at Fort Dix. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, Ron's having Ron. Oh, Ron, Jeremy. Also, now can these word hogs self fillet? Because that is that is the only thing I know about the other word hog, who I believe is currently having breakfast on the county, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> I believe Ron has discovered the color orange in his choice of wardrobe, if I'm not mistaken. He's forever a summer. There is a difference between dressing up like a policeman and having a good weekend and spending oh, time. Yeah. Around the real ones. Oh my God! Yeah, how confusing because so many themes of Ron's earlier mm-hmm. films was the prison guard coming in being. Sure. He must be yeah, confused the when the actual prison, yeah. prison guard comes in there. Like it's oh. hard when they come mm-hmm. in. Oh, Ron! Yeah, you took so, your homework with you just one time too many. <laughs> we uh, so we learned something valuable. Smaller warthogs look like larger warthogs. Yeah, that's Indeed. not the kind of thing you don't know without a proper science <laughs> education. <laughs> Yeah, and how do you know? Animal husbandry. Whereas everyone knows that Ugh. smaller human beings look like Don Rickles. <laughs> That's right. All right, we got uh, we got two more. We got Huel sees baby. Well, there's a little more to this. Oh, there's young, more to seeing it. young Huel is it's like watching the Phantom Menace. There he is. <laughs> it's all in the offing. <laughs> so there they are, the three newest additions to the warthog family. And I must say, it's hard to describe exactly how it feels looking into the eyes of one of those warthogs, knowing it's named after you. <laughs> oh! Could I get? Could I please get that as a sound bite? <laughs> <laughs> Huel, you ever stare down the single eye of a hog? I like. To, I have stared down the single eye of a hog, and I've named it after myself as well. Mm-hmm. And if you're named after me, you can hide wherever you like. Well, I don't want to see it turn into bacon, so I hope it was an uncut hog. Well, all I can say is there are many ways to get out of a speeding ticket when you're up by the Truckee Gorge. (laughs) All right, so now we got uh, Huel comes back. Now we're hopping back to modern times, 2017. Snow-haired Huel. Snow-haired Huel. Comes back to check on the warthog. Oh. Now, it was all those years ago. Well, it was 87, right? Yeah. It was, uh, it's been 20 years. The warthog was named after him, mm-hmm. but it was just a little pup back then. So let's see what became of uh, young Huel. Well, time has passed. And looking yeah. back at that old video log, I got to tell you, it doesn't get any better, any more fulfilling than knowing that you had a baby warthog None named better. after you, my Thank little namesake, Huel. And to be completely honest Hold with you. Hold on, let's stop for a second. Nothing better yeah, than Nobel Prize. That's prizes. a guy without kids. <laughs> like, like if he ran into Tom Brady and he showed him seven Super Bowl rings. Yeah. Can't that's compare. okay, yeah. Tom, yeah. but. I don't want to be a one upper, but. <laughs> well, Mr. Armstrong, the moon may be a fun place to visit, but I've never met a warthog named Neil. But I have. <laughs> But I have told several of them to Neil. Uh, Neil, that's funny. Neil Armstrong is also a thing that I've said often to my right. friend Armstrong. <laughs> All right. Well, Huel's heading in to check up on the warthog named after him. And to be completely honest with you, and this is kind of embarrassing, I had forgotten all about little Huel until I Doubt it. looked at this old video log. And, of course, that got me thinking. Wonder how Huel is doing. I've been a bad father. I better come back to the zoo. Oh, I bet you're a bad check daddy. Check up on little Huel and see <laughs> I how bet he's you're doing. You're a bad daddy, Huel. So here, over 25 years later, we have come back to the entrance of the Los Angeles Zoo. We are being met at the zoo gate by introduce yourself to everybody, Jeff. I'm Jeff Holland, curator of mammals here at the LA Zoo. Curator of mammals, and that includes. Warthogs, and I have come here. You heard me set it up. I've come here, and I feel very negligent in having, you know, because of a court order. I'm exactly 500 yards from the entrance (laughs) to the LA Zoo. The curator guy's got a little. It puts the lotion in the basket too, right? And he only shook his hand for like eight and a half seconds. 
Yeah, Huel's lost his. He's losing. Well, he's getting older now. He's right. losing his grip. Right. Yeah, the, the 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 zoo curator has a little bit. Has a little. Uh, You're a dirty oinker, Callahan. <laughs> <laughs> he's he a little Scorpio killer about him. All right, here we go. I've come back to check up on little Huel. Well. Got some bad news for oh, you. No. Uh, little Huel is no longer here. At the wait, wait a minute. What do you mean? That's little not Huel what I meant. No <laughs> little Huel and warthogs are no longer here. Warthogs are no longer yes. here. What um, happened? Well, Little, little Huel and uh, went to Cincinnati in 1987. And <laughs> that uh, long ago. Yeah. Wow. So there's no producer. Yeah, they yeah. don't. They don't have a pre-production meeting. They don't have a post. Not one email, one correspondence. No, there's uh, none of the stuff. As, as Dana knows, when you do the Tonight Show or do any other show, you get the producer. <laughs> the <laughs> pre-interview. Pre-interview. Now. Okay. Now, little Huel has been to a lot of places. <laughs> <laughs> Cincinnati, I don't recall. <laughs> well, they should. I don't well, know it's how. The we, it's the Queen City. Well, what happened with uh, the L.A. Zoo that they were like, eh, we're out of warthogs. I mean, we're sending them away to yeah. Cincinnati. What? Why? Why not? Why? Why? Who? Who says tired of warthogs? Kids don't like warthogs. If only there was somebody that we could interview, or that you could interview is and it, find out. Is it like mm. the Mona Lisa? They go on tour to different, uh, different zoos. I don't, I don't feel like they're that exotic. Like, a, well, also they were born in '87, so they really didn't cling. To shipped them, them out quickly. Right. The minute Huel was gone, I was like, get the thing out of here. <laughs> Yeah. Rename it. Well, now when did he, Huel, that was 2017. Huel must have went very shortly after See. that. I mean, it couldn't have. Oh, he he lasted until 2014, 15? It's it, 2013. 2013. Uh, well, yeah. well, wait a minute. Didn't it say that was 2000 and. Wait, did I screw that it up? It couldn't have been 2017. Maybe 2007? No, ghost. I'll say ghost. Maybe maybe it was 2007 then. That might make more sense. 20 years yeah, ago. Yeah. Speaking of pre-production. Uh, yeah. Because if you go to that, if yeah. you go six years after the guy died, <laughs> yeah. that's a that's what they call a tell. Yeah. Yeah. I've been dead for five years, but I've been granted one more day on Earth. So what better to do than find out what happened to a warthog I met in life? I kept looking at it going, 2017, and then there was a weird math about 87. Uh, Fun fact about years. angels, Come we're on, allowed to murder with impunity. <laughs> Do you guys know where Huel's final resting place is? I got to go Palm Springs somewhere. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, oh, 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 no, wait a minute. Arlington. Okay. He was a Marine. Yeah, he was a Marine. Anybody else? I, was, I would, of course, guess Palm oh, Springs. sorry. But I'll say somewhere in the Revise. Uh, the... Basement of Mr. Fister. <laughs> <laughs> he's in the. He's actually behind the bar. Right. So far, that may be the closest resting place. Ashes scattered off the coast of L.A. County. Mm. So he didn't. Uh, he didn't get a. He got a more of a Viking funeral. Every time mm-hmm. we go swimming, sure yeah. he did. Mm. Sure, it wasn't his first. Do you know what his mother's name was? What Huel's oh. mother's name was? Yeah, I'm curious. Liberace. Jewel Hauser. <laughs> Jewel oh, Hauser. Jewel. Oh, nice. Yeah. And his father, Cruel Hauser, Cruel which Hauser. explains everything. All right. Well, uh, we'll do the news. Dana's going to hang out, and we'll do that in the next segment. First, I'll tell you about Scribd. With so much content out there, you might spend as much time looking for your next book as reading it. Scribd. Instant access to millions of ebooks, audiobooks, magazines, and more. Plus, Thoughtfully curated editor's picks and smart recommendations based on what you've read, all for just $9.99 a month. Streaming changed everything. Sure, we've all been the recipient of uh, streaming, and it's a welcome part of our life. And uh, we used to flip through TV channels hoping for something interesting that was on. And now we have thousands of options to uh, pick, pick from. Scrib does that for books. Wired and Forbes called it the Netflix for books. Uh, it's great, especially uh, if you like uh, audiobooks. And uh, I think I think my books, all my books, are up there at Scribd. So uh, go out, check it out. Nine ninety nine a month, right, Dawson? Right now, Scribd is offering our listeners a free sixty day trial. Go to go to try dot scribd dot com slash Adam for your free free trial. That's try dot s c r i b d dot com slash Adam to get sixty days of Scribd for free. Older woman. Oh, that's right. right. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, isn't she horrifying? <laughs> I know. It doesn't even have a witch hat half the time. No, no. She's an older aged. woman. <laughs> she didn't die in her 20s. <laughs> the audacity. 